Hey, Mike with Nerd Problems Gaming here. In today's video, we do an unboxing of the board game Dominion. So let's get into it. All right, guys. So now that we've got the game out, let's jump in and see what's inside. So Dominion, if you're not familiar, is a deck building game. And the basic premise is that you have a kingdom and you're trying to build the biggest kingdom, the best kingdom in the land, competing against other lords in the area. So again, the other players would be the other lords you're competing against. And so you'll start off with a base deck of cards that you'll use to gather more gold, more resources, more victory points as you play. And so there's a bunch of different base cards that you can use in the system and also different variations of the different cards you can buy from the market. And so it can give you a completely different experience every single time you play, which is really cool. Again, there's a bunch of different routes to victory as well. You want to have the most victory points at the end, but there's a bunch of different ways to do that. And again, different methods to be the player with the most victory points at the end. This comes with a little trash mat where you trash cards when you remove them from your deck. And again, we've got a bunch of different base cards. So again, you'll be able to purchase cards from the market like an artisan here, which will let you gain a card in your hand that costs up to five gold. So again, there's various different cards like this where you start with that base card. You'll be able to buy things like bandits to sabotage other players, which is nice. You can have a bureaucrat on your team. It's one of your cards. So again, each card kind of has their own unique special ability. Like a seller, for example, will let you take an additional action on your turn. So usually you have a base set of actions that you can do, cards that will give you the ability to trash cards. So like I said, you start off with that base deck and then you're able to eventually trash your worst cards in exchange for better cards as you buy them, making your deck more powerful. Because again, you can only draw so many cards a turn, play so many cards, take so many actions. But again, as you improve your deck, Cards like Festival here allows you to take additional actions, gain gold, and give you another buy option. So again, a lot of cool combinations of cards that you can have, laboratories. And so again, you'll build out your kingdom as you play, making it more powerful to try and get more victory points at the end of the game. And then also you'll have coins or money like silver here that cost so much money to buy. But then again, they give you additional money every turn. So you'll have more coins to be able to buy better cards from the market. And again, this just enhances your deck, making it more powerful. And then again, you have other cards like this, like an estate that are victory points. And so when they come up during your turn throughout the game, they're not really worth anything. So it's kind of like a wasted card. However, at the end of the game, they're worth victory points, which is how you win the game. So again, your strategy might evolve where you're buying cards later on like this that are worth victory points. But if you buy them too early in the game, it might end up kind of sabotaging your turn. Since there's not really anything you can do with them at that time. So you really have to be strategic with how you build your decks throughout the gameplay session. Now the game is for two to four players. And so you can have two player games, four player games, three player games, whatever the combination you want. And the gameplay is all going to pretty much stay the same. Some cards, for example, force other players to discard cards. And so again, that could be more beneficial potentially if you are playing against multiple people. There's other cards like a moat, for example, where you can kind of defend yourself. So if another player attacks against you, and then again, you'd be unaffected by it. So again, you really have to decide your strategy. Do you wanna have cards on hand to protect yourself? If other players are using cards to attack you, do you just wanna get a lot of money to buy more valuable cards? Do you wanna trash? bad cards from your hand, so you're left with a deck that's really good. So many different options. And so you kind of have a base market when you start the game where you'll choose only so many of these different types of cards 
to be available. And then this definitely changes how the game plays out overall. For example, I've played this before where a friend really focused on drawing a bunch of extra cards every turn, where normally I believe you only start with one card that you can draw, but they were drawing just nonstop again and again, which really built up their hand and allowed them to get a lot of money to buy powerful cards. Where my deck, for example, was just focused on having high value cards, like high money cards to start with. So I just had a lot of money that way to buy different cards. And then again, there's other players that focused more on sabotaging players. And the list kind of goes on and on your different options. So again, you might start with base copper cards like this that are only worth one point or one gold to buy things. But steadily over time, you can buy silver and gold to power up further. So again, more coppers that you can get. It's like a lot of those, because those are kind of the base ones. Curse cards, which are nice. You can kind of, again, sabotage other players, giving them curses, making them lose victory points at the end. So that's always another option where you don't necessarily need to have the most, but you might be able to sabotage other players to bring them down. Gold, for example, it's worth three every time it comes up, but costs six to buy. So again, that could play into your strategy if you have money. You can buy higher levels and then trash the lower levels like silver and copper. So lots of options as you play the game. Well, again, guys, that's really all there is to the base game of Dominion, the second edition. There's a ton of other expansions to the game. So if you like this base game that already has a lot of replay value, you can definitely check out one of the many expansions to add upon the game further. They all work together and it's definitely a lot of fun. So if you like deck building games, I'd recommend checking this out. But that wraps up the unboxing of Dominion, the second edition. And definitely stay tuned for a future video when we do a full review on the game. So stay tuned for that. Well, again, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this unboxing video on the board game Dominion. If you did, be sure to smash that like button as it really helps out the channel. And if you'd like to pick up a copy of this game, there'll be a link in the description below where you can do so. And if you like videos like this on video games, board games, and everything nerdy, be sure to check out one of our other videos here. And if you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications to get the latest updates of new nerd videos we put out. Well, once again, thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you more soon.